we're going to speak about a very important topic actually which is when you know a lot of people they ask this question is smoking really haram is smoking really haram so let's talk about smoking all right um smoking is a very interesting uh topic um and but you know it's a fiery topic a lot of people it's quite controversial some people say that smoking is makro and other people they say smoking is haram um but before we delve into this topic let's talk about what these words mean now it's important to understand that when the prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he was given the quran and he came down with the sunnah of you know his own sunnah um the, the, the he he made it very clear that this quran or this deen of islam covers our entire life okay so we, it has in it everything that we need to know about life in terms of the rulings so you know anything that we do falls into one of five rulings so anything falls into one of five rulings right number 1 is what is known as wajib and some scholars say fard um and wajib and fard basically mean this thing is obligatory right it is obligatory it's mandatory it's necessary so the definition that a lot of scholars give um is that the wajib is something that is obligatory is something that if you do it you will be rewarded by allah of course if you do it for the sake of allah and fulfill all the conditions if you do it you do it uh, for the sake of allah and fulfilling all the conditions you will be rewarded okay and if you do it if you don't do it then you will be liable to sin okay so that's wajib and an example of wajib is of course that we must um pray five times a day okay the if a person does it for the sake of allah correctly then he's he's rewarded for that and if he does not do it then he is liable to sin so that is category number one wajib now some scholars the majority of scholars say there's no difference between fard and wajib right fard and wajib are exactly the same some ulama the the hanafi scholars pre predominantly rahimahumullah they said that the difference between a fard and a wajib is that a fard ma thabata bi dalilin qat'i wal wajib ma thabata bi dalilin dhanni right that the difference between fard and wajib they they're both the same in in terms of their you have to do it they're both obligatory but fard is slightly higher than wajib in the sense that according to the hanafi scholars a fard is something that is you know it is established by a, a clear cut you know evidence clear cut piece of evidence whereas um a wajib is established by something that is less than clear cut uh you know evidence all right so but in essence they're both the same even with the hanafi scholars rahimahullah that with they they all agree that a, a wajib is something and a fard is something that if you do it you get rewarded for it and if you don't do it you're liable to punishment you're liable for sin it's sinful not to do it the opposite of that is haram okay it's the complete polar opposite of that so what does that mean haram is of course um just make sure that i am still online okay i am still online haram is the polar opposite of that so haram is something that if you do it you are liable to sin and if you refrain from it if you don't do that thing which is haram for the sake of allah you'll be rewarded for it so for example a person um he drinks alcohol if he does it then he'll be sinful and if he doesn't drink alcohol then he and, and he doesn't drink it for the sake of allah then he will be you know rewarded for that okay so that's haram and of course that's uh, sinful then you have uh, mustahab okay mustahab mustahab some people call it sunnah but mustahab means recommended so this is the level below wajib and fard 
So mustahab is something that is recommended. So if you do it, you're rewarded. But if you don't do it, you are not punished for it. Okay, mustahab. So an example of something that is mustahab is wearing white. The Prophet ﷺ said, ilbisu min thiyabikubul biyat that wear white clothes, right? So if you do it, it is rewarding, but if for the sake of Allah, of course, and if you don't do it, then there's no sin upon you. It's perfectly fine. Um, the opposite of that is makro, right? Makro, if you do it, you are not sinful. But if you refrain from something that is makro for the sake of Allah, then you are rewarded for that. An example of that is looking around in your prayers. So imagine you're praying, and you're looking around with your eyes like this. It's not haram, um, according to the stronger opinion, but it is makro. It is disliked. Makro means disliked. It's hated. It's disliked. So if a person, um, you know, looks around in his salah, he's not sinful. But if he refrains from looking around in his salah and he looks at his place of prostration, according to the majority of scholars, um, he looks at the place of prostration, then he is rewarded for that, right? Because he's not looking around in his prayers. That, so that's what makro means. That if you do it, you are not sinful. Uh, but if you refrain from doing it, then you get rewarded. And then in the middle is mubah. Mubah, you know, doing it and not doing it is the same. Right? You don't get rewarded. You don't get punished in and of itself for doing that thing, which is mubah. As an example, uh, wearing blue clothes, right? Um, if I wore a blue, uh, I don't know, a blue clothes, generally speaking, there's nothing wrong with it. It's not haram, it's not makro, it's not wajib, it's not mustahab, therefore it is what? Mubah. Driving a car could be mubah. Now, there are five rulings, all right? Going back to five rulings, right? Number one, wajib and fard, and the opposite of that is haram. Number two, Mustahab, and the opposite of that is Makro, and number three is Mubah, uh, and then Makro Haram. Okay, so Wajib, Mustahab, Mubah, Makro Haram. Is everybody clear on that? What these five things are? All right, so just summarize to summarize, just in case uh, it didn't come through properly. Wajib, if you do it, you're rewarded. If you don't do it, you're liable to sin. Haram, if you do it, you are liable to sin. And if you don't do it, for the sake of Allah, you're rewarded. Um, so those two are opposites. Mustahab, if you do it, you're rewarded. If you don't do it for the sake of Allah, um, you, sorry, if you don't do it, you are uh, not sinful. The opposite of that is makro. If you do it, you're not sinful. But if you leave it for the sake of Allah, you refrain from it for the sake of Allah, then you are rewarded. And then in between mubah, doing it or not doing it is the same. It's neither rewarded nor punished in and of itself. So I hope that's clear, inshallah. So now everything in the dunya has one of these five uh, rulings, right? So obviously salah, the obligatory prayers, they are fard or, you know, fard or they can come under wujub as well. Um, drinking wine and getting intoxicated is, of course, haram. These are mentioned in the Quran. Um, and there are lots of different things, right? Mustahab, uh, as we mentioned, doing your sunnah prayers, voluntary fasting, giving voluntary charity. All of these are mustahab. They're recommended. If you do it, you're rewarded. If you don't do it, you're not sinful. Makro, things like looking around in your prayers, okay? Uh, wearing a garment that is completely and fully red, um, as an example, right? These things are makro. Um, and then mubah, for example, using a camera. Um, or, you know, drinking from this glass, is this cup is mubah, okay? Um, so these are the five different things. Okay, uh, let me just... All right, so we're still live, it seems. So now the question comes is, what about smoking, right? Where does smoking come into this? Well, the first point to understand, so the first point we've already understood that the, everything falls into one of five categories, one of five rulings. The second thing to understand is that the general rule with regards to the dunya is that everything is halal, is mubah, until proven to be otherwise.
Okay, the default ruling is that everything is mubah, halal, permissible, until proven otherwise. So you need proof to make it haram, or to make it makru, or to make it mustahab, or to make it wajib. All right. Otherwise, everything in the dunya, by default, the default state is what? Is mubah. So if someone says, okay, what's the ruling on using a mobile phone? We would say the default ruling is what? Is mubah, is permissible. Unless we have a text from the Quran and Sunnah or from other means, which I will show you, um, which would allow or, or which would change the ruling or which would take the ruling away from being mubah to one of the other four rulings, right? I'll give you an example, okay? If we take, um, if we take, uh, you know, I don't know, driving a car, it is mubah, unless proven to be one of the other four rulings, right? So let's take smoking. Let's look at smoking. Let's figure out what is the ruling with smoking. So this brings us to the third point, and that is that the Quran and Sunnah is there. They are there for us, and Islam is there for us until the end of times. They're not just there for the sixth century. They're not just there for the Prophet ﷺ and the Sahaba. The Quran and Sunnah have mechanisms in place for us to learn the rulings about things that you know come up later on in life. You know, later on, five, six, seven, fourteen centuries after the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, what are these mechanisms? There are a number of different mechanisms. One of those mechanisms is a procedure um, called qiyas, which in English means analysis. Oh, sorry, analogy. Right? It means analogy. So, the basis of this analogy comes back to one thing that Allah is al-adl, he is you know just so he will not um he will not differentiate between two things that are similar and i'll give you an example of this right qiyas basically looks at things that were not explicitly mentioned in the quran and the sunnah or ijma and however we need to figure out a ruling for that so we might turn to Qiyas and the Prophet ﷺ himself taught the Sahaba or indicated how to make Qiyas. So for example, when a woman, uh, she came to the Prophet ﷺ and asked that, you know, can I do uh, Hajj on behalf of, or also, so, you know, uh, uh, can I do Hajj on behalf or, or must I do Hajj on behalf of someone who's deceased, a parent who's deceased, um, because they didn't do Hajj. So the Prophet ﷺ, he replied, if he had a debt, would you not pay it off? The woman said, yes. The Prophet ﷺ went on to say, فَدَيْنُ اللَّهِ أَحَقُّ بِالْوَفَاءِ So it is more important to fulfill the, the debt that is owed to Allah. In other words, the Hajj. Okay, so this shows the importance of Hajj, by the way. So the Prophet ﷺ here is making an analogy of Hajj with a debt. So that obligatory Hajj, if you don't do it, then one of your, um, your, 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 you know, children, for example, should perform that Hajj on your behalf if you pass away. If you had the ability to do it, of course, in your lifetime. So that is. Uh, so the Prophet ﷺ here is showing Qiyas. He's making an making an analogy anal analogy between Hajj and a debt. So what is Qiyas? Qiyas in, in essence, I'm going to give you an example. An example works really well here in explaining Qiyas. Uh, I'm going to try and simplify things. Of course, there are many details here that I can't mention in this short video, but you know, I'm going to try and explain this in a simple way, inshallah, so that everyone can understand. But just let me know in the chat box below whether everything is clear so far. Okay. So what is Qiyas? Qiyas has four pillars right there are four things i can't move my thumb away let me try this hat four pillars all right number one the asr number two the fara number three the hukum uh number number four the illa all right four things we're going to explain each of these four things right 
Number one is the asr. This is the original thing that we are making an analogy with. It's the thing that is mentioned clearly in the Quran and the Sunnah. All right, this is called the what? The asr. Uh, I'm just checking we're still live. Okay, we are still live. Last time I was talking and I didn't realize we disconnected. Right, so that's the asl, all right? So number one, the asl. Num that is the original thing that is mentioned in the Quran and Sunnah. Number two is the far. And the far is the new thing. The new thing, right? Um, that we're trying to find a hukum for. We're trying to find a ruling for that thing. Number three is the hukum of the original thing, which is the uh, the ruling. And number four is the illa, the reason for that, the reasoning behind that ruling, which is in, in Latin is known as the ratio decidendi. So I'll give you an example to make this clear. Let's take wine, which is explicitly mentioned in the Quran. Keep away from it so that you may be successful. Allah calls it rijs. And the word khamar in the Arabic language literally means uh, grape wine. Grape wine. It's specific to grape wine. However, and Allah uses that word khamar in Arabic for grape wine. So if we took the linguistic meaning, we would say, okay, all the other types of wine are allowed, like date wine or you know, other types of alcohol might be allowed. Right? If we took that linguistic meaning. However, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Kullu muskirin khamrun wa kullu khamrin haram. Everything that intoxicates is a khamar. And every khamar is haram. So the Prophet Sallallahu has defined khamar differently to how the language defines khamar. The Arabic language defined khamar as great point. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the religion he has defined khamar as being, you know, all types of intoxicant, all right? Which also includes weed, it includes, uh, you know, smoking marijuana, uh, it includes glue sniffing, it includes sniffing petrol or paint or anything that intoxicates, uh, any type of intoxication. The Prophet ﷺ, by this scriptural text of the Sunnah, he has made it clear, Kullu muskirin khamrun wa kullu khamrin haram. Every muskir, every intoxicant is a khamar and every khamar is haram. Alright, so he's defined the khamar, the word khamar in the religion of Islam to be different from the language. And this is the same as dua, dua, sorry, salah, for example. The word salah in the language just simply means dua, supplicating. But that's in the language. But in Islam, it refers to, you know, when you start with Allahu Akbar, you know, and those sets of actions, Fajr, Dhuhr, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, and all the other Salahs that we have, that is what is meant by Salah in the religion of Islam. So if someone simply says, you know, oh Allah, give me money, or give me this, give me that, give me Jannah, he does that five times a day, he supplicates, and he says, oh, Salah in the language means Dua? No, this is not acceptable, because we must implement the word Salah in the religion, right? according to the religious meaning, when it comes to the religion. Another, an example of this is imagine if you are in an, you know, uh, uh, an aeronautical engineering class and you've been asked to design a wing and then you draw, you know, you, you've been told you must draw a wing and you go and draw the wing of a bird. Of course, you're not going to get the marks because it is understood that you have to talk in context of an aeroplane. So it means the wing of an aeroplane, right, in that context. So... Um, so the word khamar in Islam refers to what? All intoxicants. But imagine if that hadith wasn't there, right? If that hadith, kullu muskirin khamar wa kullu khamrin haram, for the exercise of trying to understand the concept of qiyas, imagine if that hadith wasn't there, right? That every uh, intoxicant is a khamar and every khamar is haram, then khamar would still remain, at that point, it would only refer to grape wine, okay? So if that's the case, for the purpose of this exercise to understand Qiyas, let's look at weed, right, or marijuana. We look at marijuana and say, okay, is it haram or is it, you know, what's the ruling on marijuana? We could do Qiyas and we would look at these four things of Qiyas. So number one is the Asr. What is the Asr? It is Khamar, grape wine uh, or wine. 
what is the ruling on khamar? It is haram. It is what? It is haram. Um, what is the... Uh, it is haram to consume. Why is khamar haram? So we've talked about the asl. We've talked about the hukum, the ruling of khamar is to consume it is haram. And number three, the reason, the ratio decidendi, the illa, the reason why khamar is haram it is haram, not because it's wet, not because of its color. It is haram لِأَنَّهُ يُخَامِرْ الْعَقَلِ yani it, The word khamar comes from khimar. Khimar is a headscarf that women wear. right? It covers. And the word khamar, you know, it's called khamar because, it, because it, it's like a hijab. It's like a, a, a scarf or it's like a barrier between your, you and your aql, right? It, it makes, uh, it's a barrier to the aql. Right? يحجب العقل or يخامر العقل it, it, it removes your intellect not removes but it, it there's a barrier behind your intellect in front of your intellect rather so the reason that khamar is haram the reason is why it's not because it's wet it's not because it's color because of its color it's because it intoxicates then we look at the far if the far is what is weed or marijuana then we look at this marijuana, this is the far, and we say, does it have the same illa? Does it have the same ratio decidendi? Does it have the same, that quality that makes that asl have that hukum? Does it have that quality of intoxication? Yes, it does. It does. So therefore, it must have the same hukum. It must have the same, what? Ruling, all right? So therefore, we conclude cons conclusively that Marijuana or weed is haram, okay? But what about smoking? Can we do the same process? Now, of course, with marijuana and weed, it's haram anyway by the hadith, which is kullu muskirin khamrun wa kullu khamrin haram. As I mentioned, that all into intoxicants, every intoxicant is a khamr and every khamr is haram. That explicitly mentions, that explicitly includes marijuana, weed, etc. Right? Very clear. But now the question comes is what about smoking? Smoking, we look at these things again. Can we make qiyas? Can we make an anal analogy with khamar? Let's have a look. We said the asl is khamar, wine. The ruling is it's haram, the hukum. The illa, the reason of that ruling, the reason why it's haram is what? It's because it's intoxicant. Does smoking intoxicate you no it doesn't it doesn't intoxicate you so we say that based on this qiyas we cannot say it's haram based on this qiyas and so it goes back to the original ruling which is everything in the dunya is halal mubah until proven haram because allah says in the quran he is the one that has made for you everything in the earth so based on this qiyas we cannot say that it is haram because this is not a valid qiyas because smoking does not intoxicate so it does not have the same ruling as um, khamar which is haram based on this analogy. However, maybe we can make an analogy with something else. Um, let's have a look. Can we make an analogy with let's say some slow killing poison? Right? What is the ruling on poison? Poison slow killing poison or poison that harms you even if it doesn't necessarily kill you what is the ruling on that it is haram what is the ruling on that it is haram that's the hukum why what's the proof of that allah says Wala tulqu bi ila tahluka. do not harm yourselves with your own hands right don't use your hands to lead yourselves into destruction and also, the Prophet ﷺ said, لا ضرر ولا ضرار. There is no harm nor reciprocating harm. So based on these two pieces of evidence and more, we can say clearly that slow killing poison is haram. Okay. Number three, what's the reason for this hukum? What's the illa behind it? The reason for why slow killing poison is haram is what? It is uh, the, the reason is because it harms you, uh, it harms you a lot, right? And so then we look at a cigarette, 
Does it also have the same illa? Does it have the same ratio decidendi? Does it have that same quality that makes slow killing poison haram or poison that harms you haram? Yes, it does. In fact, at the back of the cigarette packets in many countries, it says smoking kills. Um, even one cigarette, you can go on YouTube and you can check the experiments. Even one cigarette has a huge impact on your lungs. Okay, so based on this, it is very clear um, that smoking is haram according to the stronger view among the ulama. And Allah mentioned very clearly, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَ Don't you know, use your hands to lead to destruction, right? In another, in, in a hadith, the Prophet said, لا ضرر ولا ضرر. There should be nothing that you do, you know, there should be no harm, nor any reciprocating harm. Um, okay, Ahsan Rauf says, why do we hear ulama, uh, mainly from Pakistan, say that smoking is makru rather than haram? Okay, um, some of the earlier scholars, you know, maybe 50, 60, 70, 80 years ago, when the harms of smoking were not known, right? They weren't known that much in those days. And so when smoking first came out, the worst thing that you could think of with regards to smoking, the worst effect of smoking that was known to people um, was the bad breath. And so many scholars performed qiyas with onions and garlic. Right to eat onions and garlic, you not you shouldn't go to the masjid after eating onions and garlic because why? Because other people are harmed and the angels are harmed from that bad breath. So onions and garlic, eating them are makro. Okay, if you're going to go to the masjid, and so based on this, many scholars said smoking is makro because they looked at the asal, which is onions and garlic. They looked at the hukum, it's makro. Why is it makro? Of course, we're talking about raw onions and garlic, which may have that smell, okay? Why is it makro? It's makro because of the smell. And angels are harmed by that which humans are harmed. Um, so, uh, yeah, so th th that's the reason. And then smoking, does it have the, you know, a, a displeasant smell? Of course it does, it's disgusting. And therefore, they said that they made qiyas with onions and garlic. Because the scholars of the past, they did not know that smoking has, you know, very clear-cut evidence that it harms a person's lungs, it harms a person, you know, it, it, it can cause cancer, it can even cause death, you know, so many deaths around the world every year because of smoking, all right? So, at that time, they didn't know this, so they could make a qiyas, an analogy with, you know, onions and garlic, for example, but now we know that smoking kills, smoking is very harmful, and so, we must also make a qiyas with uh, an, an analogy with something else that has similar properties, which is that quality of harming you, um, you know, significantly. And therefore, we can make qiyas with slow killing poison.